system query can do to a particular system. So the reach limits that you set up can be enforced in a variety of different places, prior to execution, during execution, or both. How you're going to do this is going to be very dependent upon what you're trying to accomplish. If you've got that super user who keeps uh, access to, to bring them to its knees, chances are you're going to do set it up for both. Uh, if all you're trying to do is say, let's limit the ad hoc queries for this warehousing environment, you may just say, let's do this for actual and see what actually happens. Once once again, be aware of what you can do. Uh, and uh, you know, as DBAs, we tend not to be the people who are able to make these decisions. However, we can make these recommendations and say, okay, let's give this a shot and see how well it works out. To say scope within the resource governor, uh, query bad transaction or both. So we all know what a query is. That's that SQL statement you write. So what's the scope? When the scope is query, it says, okay, I don't want this query to retrieve more than a million rows. The next step, <laughs> next step up is batch. We can say, I don't want this batch, meaning a potential collection of queries more than a million rows. Uh, we can do this for a transaction. A transaction will span batches. So multiple queries in a batch, potentially multiple batches in a, in a transaction. Uh, and we can say, OK, if this transaction is calling O, a million IOs, go ahead and kill it. So what we're changing, what we're going to do when we get it, when it's going to be applied, what it's going to be applied to, these things all add up. This is something the SA can do. The SA can also determine what the action is when these things hit. Uh, do we just want to issue a warning? Hey, you're going to be hitting a million rows. Abort the batch. Uh, kill that. Kill the transaction. Uh, or terminate the login. I am actually a fan in some circumstances of just terminating the login. One is, I guess, it appeal appeals to my uh, uh, enjoy the feeling of pow empowerment uh, so that if the login is creating problems, we can simply boost the server. But from a practical standpoint, when the offending user doesn't get booted off the server, at that point they're going to call the help desk, and so we're going to talk to somebody and get that person involved. So there is a practical side to the pleasure in uh, stopping somebody from uh, to a screeching, so much a screeching halt Resisting slow down. Probably a bad metaphor, but hey, somebody email me a better one. It can be set up for different times of days. You can define uh, a uh, collection run for oh, 95. You can determine a batch run time, midnight to 6, and go ahead and let the batch stuff uh, get resources at once from midnight to 6, but restrict it for the rest of the time. All shops that I'm in are very strongly mixed-use environments. And I don't mean mixed-use so much from a, oh, we're going to go and define everything to all rows mixed in our uh, uh, up in the, uh, either the configure or at the, at the levels. Uh, as from a practical standpoint, we have online users accessing the system. We have batch processing that's running. We've got report that's running off of what's going on. We have feeds that are coming in. We have, you know, uh, these systems are complex enough right now that it is very unusual to have a single thing that the server is doing. The ability to do this at different levels for different times of days, define the ranges, define the alarms, define the different activities, is a very strong type of thing. This capability has been around for a very long time. This is not new to 15. I don't think new to 12.5. I think it's been around longer than that. Very few shops use it. Now, one of the reasons that a lot of shops may not use this is that there is a perception that the resource governor does take up some amount of resources. Well, that's intuitive. You know that if we're doing more work, it's going to cost us something. From a practical standpoint, though, the uh, cost of not doing this, well, if you're running at 90% of capacity, we don't really want to hear that over. Head. Uh, if we're running at 30% of capacity, it doesn't matter. But what if the reason we're at 90 instead of 30 is because we have a couple of runaway users? <clears throat> well, at that point, the resource governor may be able may enable us to come back and take over box during the times when we're actually busy. The official numbers that I've heard discussed are up to 5% resource, uh, or sorry, up to 5% performance hit. 
I don't know how you would actually measure this uh, because what that, that happens is you know, the, the cost of measuring things uh, sometimes impedes what you're actually measuring. Now, you could certainly look at sysmon output and say, okay, I've had the resource governor on for a week, and this is what my CPUs are at. I had on last, uh, did not have it on last week. This is what the resource, uh, my uh, CPUs were at. But how consistent your looks are from week to week, it, it, it can be difficult to measure. The cool thing is, are we running at CPUs of 98% or CPUs of 30%? If we're up in the 90s, well, probably not for um, CPU. If you're down at the 30s, probably doesn't matter very much. There's governor. The logical process manager is similar but very different. The idea behind the logical process manager is that when you have multiple engines, we do not currently have any affinity between the engines and the processors. Let's talk for a second about how it's all set up. When you create a Sybase engine or an ASC engine, what that ASC engine is is an OS level process which is managed by the operating system. You have Engines at startup, we're going to create 10 OS level processes. Now, when we go to run something, we need to grab that, uh, grab an available process, and that process will run whatever task it is that we're trying to execute. Those processes are going to be run by actual physical CPUs. Now, and I'm not talking about virtual environments, hopefully, you're all with me on this one. There are no specific affinities between those physical processors and the uh, ASC engines. Now, that can be changed. I actually haven't been in a shop that needed it, but you see the syntax around every once in a while. So here's a DBCC tune command. I believe there's an alternate way of doing that with 15 if, in fact, you go that route. Uh, I haven't, in the 20 odd years I've been working with Sybase, uh, needed to create that CPU affinity for for any particular reason. If anybody out there uh, has had to do that, please send me a note in the circumstances. I'm always interested in learning something myself. But that said, if we have, say, 10 engines and we've got a couple of groups of users who need to batch, need to run report, they need to fill in the blank. Uh, avoid them taking over the system, but that you do want them to continue to run. Uh, maybe they keep getting kicked out by the resource manager. Well, or the resource governor. Well, the logical process manager will enable you to say, all right, I'm going to logically group the AS engines that I've defined. I've got 10 engines, and I'm going to number them from 0 through 9. That's simply the way Sybase does it. And I'm going to allow to all nine engines, sorry, all ten engines, except for the batch processes. The batch processes will only be allowed to use three of the three of the engines, let's say engines seven through nine. This is kind of cool because it enables you to control how busy individual engines get and to make sure that if engines are going to spend control, uh, spend control meaning hit 100%, uh, we're going to let all the engines spin out of control, just the ones that these batch process access to. So within the scope of the logical process manager, uh, we have the ability to, to change the priorities of tasks, logins. Uh, we can uh, assign them to specific engines or specific engine groups. And uh, we can also uh, give them priorities within each of these. In the LPM, we've also got the concept of execution class. By default, there are three execution classes, 1, 2, and 3, EC1, EC2, and EC3. Uh, priorities are high, medium, and low. General. If not changing priority, and by the way, you can change your own priority uh, with at the session level. I don't know how many of you knew that. Uh, default priority for almost everything is medium. <coughs> things like updates and your modifying index structures, you may escalate to a higher priority uh, internally while that stuff is going on. If you look at sysmon output, you'll see that things do escalate uh, from low to medium, medium to high priorities. And it'll tell you how many times that happens per minute, 